Hello, today I'm talking about anamorphics in Blender. Now, what the hell are anamorphics? Well, let me explain. So here I have three highly curated images to help explain what the hell anamorphics is. So anamorphic lenses are a type of lens that basically takes the image and squeezes it by a factor of two horizontally. Why? Uh, well, because of film, because film sucks and it's a, it's a square aspect ratio and they wanted to shoot stuff wide. So you can shoot an object squeeze it down to fit onto that film strip so you have more resolution i guess for, for film it's not really resolution it's more just quality but you can maximize the use of that film strip and it's projected de-squeezed so it just projects it two times wide and it just makes it look normal anamorphic lenses in film especially has a specific look people tend to call it like the cinematic look anamorphic look we can do it in blender fairly easily it just helps to understand kind of how it works going into it so what we're going to do is we're going to look at a frame from a render with different sort of techniques and combinations of techniques so base render is this wow what is this it's a glow globe from dune i sort of altered this i gave it a way shallower depth of field so we could just kind of see how it's going it's not denoised at all which you can see here obviously it's, it's pretty noisy it's it looks okay it doesn't look great uh you can see also Right, I have post-processing on here, so lens distortion, a little bit of blur, a little bit of glare. I'll go through that setup later. And so, this is boring. Anamorphic, among other things, is qualified by that sort of oval bokeh. So bokeh being this stuff, these like these circles, like the out of focus things. And so if we look over here, right, you can see, oh, yeah, the, it's a uh, oval bokeh. Look at that, and even like the glow is stretched out more here so it's a different look it's not just the bokeh the entire image the whole vibe is different and so how can we do this easy let me open up the scene go to the camera and you go down to depth of field right i have the depth of the field f stop is 1.8 it's very low uh, but here this ratio it says ratio distortion to simulate anamorphic lens bokeh. And so that's what we want. And since the anamorphic squeeze is a factor of two, we're just going to set that to two. And this is what we get from that. And that's all fine. And that's, you know, that'll get you, that'll get you okay results. Like it's not bad. It definitely looks better, at least to my eye, than this. And obviously case by case basis, you don't always want it to have that. But if that's what you're going for, you know, this, this does the job. Another feature in Blender, though, is if we go out to our output resolution, I already have this set, but there's this aspect. So aspect X and Y. What this does is render out our scene squeezed. So here I have it, aspect X is 2, so it's squeezed by a factor of 2. So it sort of simulates what an anamorphic lens would do in the way of just compressing and squeezing the image onto our output film strip which is just a file right and here you can see too i have the resolution is a, is weird it's 999 by 1080 the original resolution was 1998 by 1080 which is a standard anamorphic aspect ratio and you can see here it looks super wide it's not that's just this thing so if i set it to one that's the that's what it looks like right you can see that's what we've got going on over here. And so if I set that to two now, it's going to be, it, it captures it wide. It would basically, it captures wide and then squeeze it down. And that's not what we want. So we want to do half. And then when we unsqueeze it, we'll end up with the normal image. Beautiful. Oh, and also a quick note. Um, if you have a resolution like this with an odd number of pixels in Blender, you'll be able to export an image. But if you try to render out an image sequence or video, it's not gonna work so just be aware of that i just do a thousand and i it's the same thing so what does this look like basically the output image we get is this oh my goodness it's obviously squeezed by a factor of two and you can see here right the pixels are square here square noise everything like that the bokeh is technically oval but that doesn't matter and you'll see because when we unsqueeze it the bokeh is circular again and that's fine that's i was we're, we're expecting that but it, it probably doesn't show in YouTube compression, so I'll have to zoom in. The noise looks a lot different. So here, in our original image, if we zoom in, that is obviously CG noise. It's disgusting, quite frankly, and I want to throw up. But now, if we go down here, it looks a little different. It looks a little softer. It looks a little more natural, at least to my eye, it does. And that's because, right, we're de-squeezing this image, and our pixels are now a rectangle. They're a two by one rectangle. And so even just looking at this, my brain likes this a lot more. 
it feels a lot more organic. It feels softer. It feels more natural. It doesn't feel like how this makes you feel, which is bad. So now, even if you don't want that sort of anamorphic bokeh, this is something to consider because not only does the noise not look as bad, so you can maybe, you know, get away with a, a few less samples or, or whatever. Obviously, that's dependent on, on what type of render it is. But also, you can render at half resolution. And so it quite literally renders each frame in half the time. So either your animation can finish in half the time or it can be twice the samples or anything in between. But this is this can be super useful, especially, yeah, for animation, because obviously every frame you're trying to minimize how much time it's taking. And from a distance, the quality, at least to me, like this, I, this looks better and it's technically half the pixels. So that's kind of that's kind of crazy. And now over here, what we've done is same thing so with the aspect here and then that's with the ratio too so for this one ratio was one here it's two so obviously when it's squeezed the bokeh is super oval but then when you de-squeeze it it's like normal it's 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 that normal nice oval bokeh shape and so if we zoom out on all of these to me this i this is my favorite this also looks good to me. So this, you kind of get the best of both of the things. But obviously, if you're not rocking with this type of bokeh, you do this. If you're scared of doing this for some reason and you want that bokeh, do the ratio. So video over? No, I have one more thing. Two more things. First things first, compositing. And this is just one of those things that in the grand scheme of things doesn't matter. Not really, but it's it's just those little things that gives gives your render a little bit more sauce, a little bit more personality, texture, and just that that nice that nice feeling in your brain when you look at a picture and it feels right. So basic setup here, I've just got blur, I just do one pixel, a little bit of glare, you adjust that, lens distortion, distortion dispersion, uh, and then adjusting the exposure. Here for animation, I've got, I'm adding, I'm overlaying digital noise on top of it. That's different for each frame. I just find it, 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 get, it makes it feel a little bit more uniform and it takes away that sort of CG grain look a little bit. Obviously you're adding noise, so it's not great. You don't want to do it too much, but it can help a little bit. And then it's outputted. And so why is this special? Because this is, this is pretty tame. This is pretty standard node setup. The only thing is that here I'm doing this and it's applying this to the squeezed image. So it's going to be applying it to, to this, which is a little bit more realistic to the physical process where the light and the glare or whatever is going to be passing through that lens and then it's getting stretched out. So it's pretty subtle. It's a pretty subtle difference, uh, especially in this. But when you can see it, when you notice it, it can count and it can just kind of help bring everything together a little bit more. So the last little tip that I have is about film grain, which I usually add in DaVinci. This is a frame from an image sequence of scanned 35 millimeter film grain. And you can see, right, it's film grain, whatever, overlay it on the render. It can give it a little bit more of that sort of organic feel that you get with film. Obviously, you don't want to abuse it too much, uh, but it's, it's one of those, again, one of those little details. But an extra thing now, if you're doing this anamorphic look is when you overlay the film, you can take this overlay and stretch it by two because real life shooting with anamorphic onto film, that film grain when it's projected will be stretched by two. So that's just a little detail that you can add. I don't really wanna show the final shot that I had from this from this render, from this scene, because I just looked at it earlier and I kinda hate it. Uh, it's on my channel. If I don't, I'm not gonna take it down. So you can go see it if you want. The noise, you probably won't be able to see through the compression. So realistically, all these things I'm really only doing for me, you know, unless I'm uploading on a much higher quality than just onto YouTube. But again, it's just those little details that if you start to think about it, you can implement certain things and experiment and find what gives gives your render that sauce, that extra sort of kick that I find a lot of renders lack, whether that's, I don't know, personality or just it, it feels fake. You can tell it's CG. Maybe it's a little too clean or it's just lacking in... That's mean. I was going to say lacking in creativity. But it's true. You see a lot of that stuff. And obviously, that's something that people work on. It's whatever. But it's, it's something to think about to kind of push yourself out of that and to really make 3D rendering your own sort of artistic medium and to not fall into sort of the common visual themes and, and practices in the Blender community, obviously, because it's a big community. It's free. It's open source. It's awesome. 
a lot of people are doing stuff but yeah i'm <laughs> that's a whole other that's a rant that's a whole other video so i'll leave it here leave a like throw me a comment subscribe to the channel give me some give me some engagement but genuinely i hope you found this helpful go make something